Hey moms, Christina Moreland here, author of The Secrets of the Supermom series and Fit Mom Secrets. And I need to talk to you guys about something really important today, okay? So we're gonna talk about just some nutrition basics um, that a lot of people don't understand or they don't really um, get right. And we're going to talk about why you seriously need to eat if you want your body to perform. So the reason why this came up is because yesterday um, I did a, a an awesome, it was a cardio strength intervals training um, class that I like to do. Now I am a member of a gym and I like to attend group classes even though I'm an online trainer. I like the social setting. I like the environment of being around other people that have similar goals. Um, and you know, the social aspect is really important to me in the gym. So yes, I could do all my workouts on my own by myself. I could ride them. I could do them, but it's a lot more fun and a lot more social. And I push myself harder in a group setting. So I went to the gym yesterday and one of my favorite trainers was teaching it. Hi Jen. And her workouts are notoriously hard. I mean, they just are. That's why people go to her class is because you want to push yourself and again that's why I go because I know I'm not going to push myself as hard if I'm by myself than when I'm in her class and I'm doing it with a group of people so yesterday <clears throat> now I need to stress to you just how intense this workout was we did four rounds we started with 20 reps of everything then we went to 16 reps of everything. Then we went to 12 reps of everything. Then we went to eight reps of everything. And she had, um, I believe it was between six and eight exercises that we were doing with very little rest in between. So the first time when we were doing 20 reps, the first exercise was burpees, which is a full body exercise. And then with heavy weights, an overhead press for 20 reps. So that alone spikes your heart rate, that alone eats into your glycogen your uh, glycogen stores, which is your energy source for your body. Um, that alone stresses your body. That was one of, like I said, about eight exercises and we did four rounds of it. And um, it, it, was, it was intense because there's not a lot of rest. So at the end of that workout, um, two people approached me and they were like, man, you know, you just did awesome in that workout. And I said, thank you. And I was appreciative. And I'm not telling you any of this to brag. Okay. So please understand that this is really important. Okay. I want you to be healthy. I want you to take care of your body. But a couple of these ladies came up to me and they were like, you know, how did you do that? How did you? And I said, well, you know, first of all, I've been going a long, a long time. I'm also a coach myself. So I know kind of not only what her cues are, but I also know um, how to push my body. And I said, but to do a class like that, you have to eat. And so I asked one of them, I was like, so tell me a little bit about what you're doing. What? Because she told me that she had been a member for about a month. And I said, so tell me what you're doing. Are you eating in between meals? Because she was about to head to another class. She was going to head into another high intensity class. And I was like, wait, aren't you going to eat in between? You need some protein. You need some, you know, some carbohydrates. You need some fuel for your body. And she's like, no, I'm not really eating right now. I'm, I'm just drinking a lot of water. I'm trying to lose weight. And this is a mom of four kids. And I was like, wait, you got to eat. Like, please tell me that you're going to eat. Go eat something. Now, so to give y'all some basic understanding of nutrition. This is really important. Your body needs, and, and it needs lots of things. It needs lots of vitamins, it, lead, it needs amino acids, it needs lots of things, but three main macronutrients um, for its body's fuel, your body's fuel, and that's protein, carbohydrates, and fats. And you need all three of those for survival. Now, the body's main energy source is, guess what? carbohydrates. Now, a lot of people don't know that or they forget that and they think that carbs are bad. And what happened was in the 80s, everything was about aerobics and carbs, aerobics and carbs and aerobics and carbs. And so then people started gaining more and more weight and carbs got a bad rap for it. But it's not carbohydrates. There's two types of carbohydrates. There's simple and there's complex carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates are like breads and pastas. They give your, um, your blood sugar an initial charge they're going to give you an, an insulin charge and then you're going to crash later they don't give you sustainable energy complex carbohydrates do give you sustainable energy and they're things like um sweet potatoes um a, a lot of vegetables a lot of fruits are complex carbohydrates so you need those for your body's energy sources and carbohydrates fuel both the aerobic 
and aerobic systems in your body. So if you're doing any kind of exercise, it's either going to be aerobic or anaerobic. Aerobic is more of like a steady state cardio, um, and it's what most people, especially moms, start doing when they get back into working out again. You're gonna be running, cycling, doing something with a sustained amount of time, right? So that's your aerobic system. Carbohydrates fuel that. Um, the anaerobic system is more like resistance and weight training. Carbohydrates fuel that as well. So the problem is when people don't eat carbs, then they can, they can get really, really sick and excessively fatigued. So glucose is the end result of carbohydrate digestion. It's the sole source of energy for your brain under normal circumstances, and it's essential in maintaining nerve function. So that's a pretty important job, and you get glucose from consuming carbohydrates, particularly complex carbohydrates. That's a really important job, right? Your body can't function properly if you're not getting the right, the right nutrients. So the National Academy of Sciences, Food and Nutrition recommends that humans consume between 45 to 65 percent of their carbohydrates per day. Um, so for example, if you have a whole meal and your whole meal is up to 100 percent, between 45 to 65 percent of that would be carbohydrates. Now, depending on your activity level and if you're an athlete or if you're not an athlete, depending on your activity level, and what your goals are, then that percentage may vary. So an endurance athlete, for example, may consume up to 65% or more of those car carbohydrates per day. But if you're doing more resistance training and you're trying to lose weight, then you may be on the lower end of 45%. But you have to eat carbs because that is your body's energy source, okay? So protein is another macronutrient. It's essential for building and repairing muscle. Did you know that when you're doing weight training, you're actually tearing down your muscle tissue? When you do bicep curls, okay, you're tearing down the bicep muscle right here. But it's in its recovery state. This is why it's essential to get rest days, at least two rest days per week. That's when your muscle repairs itself. So protein helps you rebuild and repair muscle tissue um, and other tissues as well. It also helps you to replenish your red blood cells. Um, it can help you fight diseases. It helps to replenish your hair and, and helps with your skin and other tissues. And it helps to regulate your hormones. So protein is sort of like, I mean, all three are essential, but protein is, that is the one that I lead every single meal with. I always lead with a protein source. Now, the, um, the recommended daily allowance by the, um, I didn't write down the organization, but the government basically, um, the FDA recommends that humans consume about 0.8 grams of protein for every two, approximate two pounds of body weight. That's for basic survival and optimal health, okay? I consume more than double that because in the fitness industry, again, Muscle tissue is essential, and the reason is because the more muscle you have, the more calories you will burn even at rest. So muscle is a good thing. I know a lot of ladies are very afraid to pick up weights or they're afraid to lift heavy, um, but we do not have the physical makeup that men have. So unless there's something chemically altered with you or you have a different chemi chemical makeup than most women, you will not look like a man if you lift heavy. The protein is essential because that is what's going to allow you to, again, build and repair your muscle tissue and other tissues in your body. So in the fitness industry, as an example, um, the recommended amount is one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So that's more than double what the RDA recommends. Um, to put that in perspective, if you weigh 125 pounds, then you're going to consume 125 grams of protein in a day. That sounds like a ton, but really if you're consuming frequent meals, which I recommend five meals per day, that's breakfast, lunch, and dinner with two snacks in between. Each one of those, you would, if you weigh you know, 125 pounds, 130 pounds, you would consume about 25 grams of protein 
per meal. So once you get into the hang of it, it's not that hard. It's just getting into a rhythm. But if you're eating every three hours or every three and a half hours and you're leading with a protein, then it's totally doable. And just to, you know, you have the, the measurements built in on your body. If you look at your open palm, that's a, the approximate size or about four to five ounces of protein per meal and that will give you enough. And then for your carbohydrates, your complex carbohydrates, it's about the size of your fist. So I actually don't do any calorie counting. I um, The only measurements I use are my open palm and then my fist, that's what I use. So the problem is that if you don't get these macronutrients, here's what can happen. So, let me see here. There are some, okay, so the amount of protein is a little bit controversial. Um, and the reason is because the RDA says that excessive meat and protein consumption um, can lead to higher fat. So obviously Americans are notoriously um, have overweight issues. And so the RDA, I think they're trying to basically limit what the amount of is that um, Americans consume for that reason. But if you are eating lean proteins like fish and chicken, um, shrimp, if you can, if you can tolerate it, lean proteins, then you're not going to have this problem. Okay. So, um, I had something on here that I wanted to read you, but I'm trying to find it. Okay, so, but they do note that more protein may be necessary for maintenance of an athlete's greater lean body mass. So I am totally in that group. If you exercise three to five days a week, you are in that target group. You're considered an athlete. Athletic performance, your requirements go up. So this book, this textbook was written basically for people who are deconditioned because it's, it's, um, it's basically just trying to give a level playing ground for everybody, but you need protein. You need a higher amount than what you're probably used to. And you absolutely need carbohydrates. Okay. So athletes who are dieting in order to make a desired weight or body profile may also need a higher protein so that they, they concede that here. And you and I are definitely in that category, okay? So what can happen if you don't eat, okay? Well, this is common sense, but a lot of times common sense isn't common practice, right? So we need to talk about this because I see this happen all the time. It's just like the lady that I met yesterday that I was telling you about. Um, I, I'm very concerned that one, one day in the gym she's going to pass out because I've seen this happen. Um, you can get inadequate energy levels. You'll get an insulin surge with, with high insulin levels in the blood um, can contribute to low blood sugar and hypoglycemia. So you can experience excessive fatigue, lightheadedness, dizziness, and ultimately you can pass out. Your body can shut down and you can pass out. Um, and like I said, I've seen this happen in the gym. And what happens is they I've seen people pass out on the gym floor. If they have weights around them, they could fall on that. They could fall and hit their head on the way down. They could fall and hit their neck. Um, it's very dangerous. It's dangerous for other people around you as well. The trainer has to stop the class. She has to send everybody out. Um, they have to call an ambulance. They have to make sure that that person can be resuscitated. Um, there's a lot that goes on. They and One day I was there and all the classes, because this happened in the hallway, somebody had passed out. So they didn't pass out in class where they could clear the room and then close the room and secure everything. This happened in the hallway. And so all the classes beyond that point and people coming in and leaving the gym, they had to completely stop. So they shut the gym down for an entire hour so that they could resuscitate this one person who had passed out. And um, I don't know if it was because of not eating, but I have seen this happen before. So I just really, really want to stress upon you how important it is for you to eat, particularly if you are doing exercise. Okay. Um, eating carbs, particularly complex carbs can prevent you from hitting the wall or bonking, which is an inadequate supply of glycogen again, which is your energy store. Um, 
it's for muscle work, excessive fatigue, and inadequate supply of your glucose, which is your fuel to the brain. Um, so again, you can experience lightheadedness, dizziness, lack of coordination, weakness, and total exhaustion and body fatigue, and ultimately your body shuts down. So please eat, please, 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 please eat, um, particularly if you are exercising, and um, do not skip breakfast. In fact, skipping meals is the worst thing that you can do. I know a lot of people think, especially if they want to lose weight, that skipping meals is the way to go because then they're not consuming those calories. But actually what happens is your body goes into what's called starvation mode and the next meal that you do consume, regardless of the, the nutritional breakdown of that meal, your body will consume it almost exclusively as fat. But if you're eating frequently throughout the day and you get those three key macronutrients that we just talked about and you get them in a good balance, then you are actually going to be able to consume and eat more, but you're going to lose more body fat and you're going to look leaner and stronger and fitter. Your muscles are going to pop out. Um, you will look and feel amazing. So the second thing that I, got, I want to talk to you guys about is moms, right? All of you are moms. Please feed your kids breakfast, like an adequate breakfast, even if it's a boiled egg with some sauce or um, maybe it, we do scrambled eggs with cheese mixed in and toast. I do cinnamon toast for my kids. Um, another thing that I do is I buy them the smaller drinks of the Boost, you know, in the nutrition section where um, it's near the vitamins. If you go to the supermarket, it's near the vitamin section. There's a whole section of protein drinks and they're targeting seniors, but we buy them for our kids. And the reason is because they're smaller packaged. Um, my boy, especially Ashton, because he's older, he can consume an entire one in the morning with like half an apple and some cinnamon toast and that is a great breakfast he's getting about 20 grams of protein and Luke who's younger will consume about half of his drink but that's between 10 and 12 grams of protein for him and it helps to sustain their energy levels all day long children cannot concentrate if they don't get food and the reason why I'm talking about this is because I remember when my son was going to daycare and we would check in and I was continuously shocked at how many kids were sitting there at the table before school with a big Ziploc bag full of sugary cereal. And that was breakfast. It was just dry cereal. They didn't have any milk. They may have had like a glass of milk or a glass of water, but it was just this much of sugar cereal. And that's all sugar. There was no nutritional value in that whatsoever. And children just can't concentrate. They just can't. And you can't expect your body to perform, anybody's body to perform, if you give it junk. So I am a huge proponent of nutrient-dense foods. These are foods that have a high nutritional quality to them. Um, I like what's called low glycemic index foods. So these are foods that um, do not have a tendency to spike blood sugar levels. Um, the natural sugars that you can get in apples, for example, are an excellent source of energy for you. Um, so I am a huge proponent of eating frequent balanced meals, you know, spaced at three to five, three to three and a half hours every day, um, two snacks in between breakfast, lunch, and dinner, not skipping breakfast and lead every single meal with a protein. So feel free to reach out to me, message me, comment here um, if you have any questions or if you want to know more about how to set up a balanced meal. Um, I'd be happy to help you with that. And also if you need more help with um, exercising, I can help to train you. I've got a course. You can check it out at the link that I posted here. But the main thing is make sure that you are getting nutrient dense foods, that you do eat carbohydrates, carbohydrates, particularly complex carbohydrates, that you get your three macronutrients in every day in abundance, protein, carbohydrates, and fats, um, because they are essential for your body's function and, um, and that you feed your kids um, good foods just like you're eating. Set the example for them, okay? Because that's how they learn. My son all the time, he's like, I, I wanna grow, I wanna be big and I wanna be strong. And I said, well, actually the best thing that you can do is eat this food that I'm putting in front of you. Eat frequently, be strong, exercise, and um, take care of yourself. And mom, you are the example. You're the example to your kids. You're the only one that can put that in front of them and they're going to eat it. So whatever you put in front of them, they will eat. 
So give them good stuff. All right. I will see you guys next Tuesday, uh, probably with a pretty awesome workout, but I just had to pause and talk about this um, nutrition basics because either people aren't doing it, you know, again, common sense isn't common practice, or there's some misunderstanding about it. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of it because I want you and your family to be healthy. All right. I'll talk to you later, guys. Thanks for being here.